Hey everybody, welcome back. We're still on Theory of the Firm, we're still doing market structures, but we are transitioning. We're transitioning to monopolistic competition. Here's what we've done so far. We've spent a ton of time on perfect competition. It's that dot, it's on the far left of my market structure spectrum. Hopefully you, you've seen some other videos and you've seen this spectrum. So perfect competition, far left, it's right there. And then we spend a ton of time on monopoly, the far right of the market structure spectrum. What we want to know, what we need to know is the following. When we're right there at perfect competition, product differentiation zero in a particular industry, okay? Every firm in a particular industry or market is making the same good. But as soon as we go to the right at all, we start seeing market power. And market power increases as we go to the right, okay? We get all the way to monopoly, complete market power. What do we mean by that? Complete product differentiation, no close substitutes at all. And on top of that, barriers to entry are infinite for a monopoly, okay? So market power, pretty much as high as it can get when you get to monopoly. As we move back this way, less and less and less, but we still got it. So. Why do we spend all of this time here and all this time here and how much time are we going to take on monopolistic competition? Well, this is part one and that's all there's going to be. There's just going to be part one because it's so similar to the monopoly. There's a few differences, okay? But some of them are just nuanced differences. Here's one of the nuanced differences. When we do monopoly and you go over here and you draw the demand curve, okay? You draw a demand curve. We usually draw pretty steep, which makes sense. What does steep mean to you? inelastic, right? Buyers are going to be pretty inelastic. Why are they going to be inelastic? There's no close substitutes. So as we move from monopoly that direction to the left, the availability of close substitutes is increasing. And as we're going that direction, market power is going down. And so what's going to happen is close substitutes increase. We get more and more and more elastic, but the demand curve still downward sloping. That's key. Okay. If we're not right there at perfect competition, the demand curve is downward sloping. So it's just a nuanced difference. So as market power decreases, demand curve flattens, meaning more um, close substitutes. The next big difference is between the short run and the long run. And you see, I've got this graph set up for us to do that. So let's do this monopolistic competition. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a demand curve. I don't know, maybe I should have made it a little bit flatter. It doesn't really matter, but I am just gonna make it flatter. I'm gonna make it slightly flatter to emphasize that this is monopolistic competition. We got some close substitutes. But since demand is downward slope, sloping and we do have product differentiation, this firm is the only one that can make this particular um, product and da downward sloping demand, MR still breaking away at twice the slope. Looking a lot like monopoly, right? And the marginal cost curve, same as it always is, right? Marginal cost eventually is going to be upward sloping as we hit that decreasing returns to scale. As far as the profit maximizing output, same as Monopoly again. So many redundancies with Monopoly. Guys, if you know Monopoly, you're almost there on monopolistic competition. So MR equals MC determines our output level. So I'm just going to draw that straight up like that. Q profit max. Now, in the short run, monopolistic competition can make positive profits. Let's put in the line that we need to show profits. We need to add in ATC, okay? Because profits are all about the relationship between ATC and price. So here comes our ATC. I just need to make sure that ATC, when I hit that Q, is below the price. Oh, I haven't even labeled the price. Let's get that labeled real quick. At Q profit max, what's price going to be based on? Same as monopoly again right there, the demand curve. So I'm going to draw this over. There's my price monopolistic competition. So now drawing the ATC, make sure ATC is below that price when I cross this alpha hole output threshold. So here we go. I'm going to go downward sloping. I hit MC. I've got to come upward sloping. There's my ATC there. Oops. That's not the dot I want. That's the dot I want. I want the dot right at the output level. Good, grab that, bring it over, and A, T, C. Profits in the short run. But we do not have infinite barriers to entry, and we can offer close substitutes. 
What I'm saying is maybe think of the hamburger business or the hamburger industry. If you think about maybe the last couple of decades, I don't know about your town, but my town, we used to have McDonald's, Burger King, maybe Wendy's, and then maybe a couple hamburger joints. But hamburger joints have just increased unbelievably in a lot of our towns, okay? McDonald's, still they're the only ones making the Big Mac. Nobody else can make the Big Mac. They've got product differentiation, but there are tons of close substitutes. As close substitutes come in, they're gonna squeeze the profits out. So in the long run, we say in monopolistic competition, you can't make profits in the long run. Hint, what do monopolistic competition firms do? They're innovating all the time to try not to let the long run happen. But for this video, let's act like the long run happens, okay? We have close substitutes coming in like crazy. What are they gonna do? They're gonna squeeze out the profits. Why? Because as additional firms enter that have close substitutes, the demand curve is going to shift to the left and probably flatten a little bit. Why shift to the left? Well, the demand curve is made based on the marginal private benefit of consumers, which is their ability and willingness to pay. As close substitutes come in, their willingness to pay for that McDonald's Big Mac is going to go down, okay? And that's going to shift the demand curve leftward. On top of that, because we've got close substitutes, flattening, okay, of the curve, right? Think elasticity, a little bit flatter. So shifting left and getting flatter. And that's going to happen until we squeeze out all the profits. So long run zero profits for monopolistic competition this is probably the biggest difference the one that you're going to get tested on probably the most as far as your class or the ap test when it comes to monopolistic competition versus monopoly they've been very similar so far here we go we're going to draw a demand curve maybe a little bit flatter downward sloping it's been pushed left perhaps i'm going to change where i put the atc line okay don't you know don't think it's the exact same scale here I've got MR at twice the slope, I'm going to put in an MC curve, here's my MC curve, I'm going to find my output level, what's my output level, I mean hopefully we've got this down now, MR, MC, that's my Q profit max, and guess what, since we're going to be in the long run, that profit maximum is going to be zero economic profit, what's the price we're going to charge based on the demand curve? Go up to the demand curve, draw that over, price MC, and now I need to show zero economic profit in the long run. Well, how do I do that? I'm hoping you know. Like, I almost want to give you a little second here to think about it. How am I going to do that? I got to make ATC equal to price, right? ATC equal to price. So how am I going to make ATC equal to price? I got to have ATC going down all the way until I hit the MC, and then it's going to come up. So there's going to be a tangency point. ATC, let's see if I can do this well on the first time here. ATC down, 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 down. Hit the price point right there. Keeps going down, keeps going down, but no longer tangent. Hopefully you can see that. Hit the MC and bring up the ATC. So at Q profit max, which is zero profit, my ATC is that amount, which is the price. If ATC is the price, we've got zero economic profits. This is the only difference. Short run, no difference really between a monopoly and monopolistic competition, except for maybe we make the curve a little bit flatter, okay? That, the demand curve a little bit flatter. The long run, here's our key. In the long run, monopolistic competition, we do not have infinite barriers to entry, close substitutes are gonna come in, squeeze out the profits in the long run. Here's how you draw the curve to show zero economic profits for monopolistic competition. Hopefully that made sense to you, and thanks for staying with me. See you in the next video.